playing my soccer universe. <laughs> yep, two, three ones, and so many stories. Um, I think this was yesterday for me, at least that I realized for the first time that VAR really took center stage in uh, the Champions League. I think you can surely say that because there were uh, two decisive calls, talk about those, uh, made thanks to VAR, uh, they, it would have ended otherwise potentially and yeah a little bit more controversy as well I mean <laughs> what can you say uh, the game that I watched was Porto Roma which at the beginning uh, if you ask me was the one that was yeah that's an open game um, not gonna deny you know I have slight favors for Roma but when I watched the game uh, you know I started maybe 10 15 minutes or so I could already see that yeah Roma looks shaky and um, Porto had really, really a big movement forward, very much on the on attack, very offensively and really caused trouble to uh, Roma right from the get-go were chances. Uh, one guy particularly stood out, uh, Varega. I don't know many from Porto's uh, squad. Uh, but Varega is to me now absolutely a known quantity. Uh, he was the entire match more or less the best game on the field. And at least the feeling that I had. Um, yeah, uh, he had, he had I, I, I think, a big chance uh, already. Then uh, there was a shot um, or goal that Olsen yeah, could take care of. Um, in addition, there you know, Suarez, his partner, also did quite well. But um, it came from a mistake from Manolas, uh, a guy that actually gives Roma stability. Uh, that we got the first goal. Varega got the ball of Manolas, who did not, probably didn't expect him uh, to attack him from kind of behind. Got it cleanly off him. Um, is making the run towards the box, then plays it off to um, Corona, who was another player that in the first half caused loads of trouble for Roma. Uh, got it wrong. Uh, Varega got the ball, Corona took it to, to, to the box, played it to Varega, who tracked back. Uh, was actually beautifully played. Uh, Corona, like that, puts the ball to Varega who takes it and then puts it into Suarez, um, who puts it into the net. So, Suarez makes the 1-0 and, yeah, was potentially oh, an offset. I honestly don't think so, but, you know, um, Roma brain. Uh, and then they could have almost immediately made it even two, but there was a um, good save. But then suddenly Roma kind of got it sorted out. Um, it was a really frantic and weird first half, I gotta say. And it seemingly it was De Rossi who in a way stepped up and kind of organized everyone. I mean, I really didn't like the wingers uh, and Roma got attacked over the wings constantly, constantly. So, uh, but then they took control of the center and the one time I think it was Pellegrini got guard in a box and Militao. Uh, pull his leg out and yeah, was a penalty. Uh, De Rossi steps up in the, against Casillas. Um, that's a duel that actually could have happened a long before. Uh, that, I mean, it was 34 year old against 37 year old. De Rossi makes the stutter step that kind of uh, makes it easy for him to convert the penalty. 1 1, and that's the half time. Uh, although I think Porto again could have made something before halftime. Uh, De Rossi had to actually come off and that I think was a big difference to me because he really then he got it sorted and yeah did not look well. Uh, anyway second half Porto comes out storming has off the bat two huge chances and then uh, I think Karstorp who really was super shaky or in the first half and uh, couldn't get anything together in the second half. 
I was... I really thought he should have been taken off sooner. Because every ball he touched, every pass he made, went to, to the opposition. He was uh, put under pressure constantly. Uh, so yeah, he makes a mistake, uh, cross in. And I think it was Pellegrini who forgot to... Not sure if it was Pellegrini, uh, but I think it was him who uh, should have um, watched Varega and no, nope, he didn't. <laughs> he had a clear... It was clear in front of Olsen, uh, who also I thought could have maybe gotten out there. Uh, but yeah, 2-1 for Porto and then I was afraid it's gonna go to uh, overtime. Uh, still Porto was more initiative but you could see the longer the game went on the more they were settling for overtime uh, which is exactly the one thing i did not want to have and that's where it went uh overtime to me uh, yeah there was a little scuffle between jacko and pepe which i think was for roma in a way necessary to get back into the game because up until that point porto was eating them alive but that little scuffle where then Jaco suddenly, I mean, yes, uh, Pepe made a head, headbutt and yeah, Pepe back at Porto. He actually played quite well, uh, although he was always straddling the line to a red card as well, especially after this incident. Uh, yes, he made a headbutt, but Jaco was in there and suddenly Jaco falls to the ground. Uh, it looked really, really weird and I think they both deserved a yellow card for that. Uh, but I think this was more of a tactical maneuver on Jacob's part, who was now the captain, to really get, um, you know, Roma a little bit back, ignite Roma a bit more, because the fire was all with Porto. Roma looked a little bit, yeah, uninterested is maybe the wrong word, but you know, you you get you see what I mean. Anyway, so Roma, there was that little bit. I still think the Porto had the better of the game, uh, and, and, and in overtime, uh, I don't get why there was a substitution just two minutes into overtime. I think um, it was probably some equipment was not ready or whatever, need to go to the bathroom. And yeah, then there was right against, again, Varega, huge um, a chance, it was well defended, but another big chance taken makes it, uh, but misses it. It goes to second part of uh, overtime and there I actually saw uh, Jaco had two huge chances and I think the first one he has to make, I mean he makes the cut in, gets the uh, ball in shooting shul shul position and just is leaning back too far. He's aiming for the high corner. I think if he gets it on goal, this is a goal. Little, uh, just a minute later, he's again free and lobs it in and Pepe scratches his... Uh, yeah, no, no scratches off the line, but in, it was well before the line. Uh, get the ass, the ass, get the power in. There he needs to have... This needs to be a goal. Uh, one of those two need, need, need to be goal. And then Porto looked absolutely on the ropes at that point. I think Roma had the better of the overtime, uh, which was a little bit surprising, but maybe... yeah. <laughs> they didn't put as much work in. Uh, and yeah, it was a weird cross in to the box. And suddenly uh, Florenzi, who actually had a good game, makes a really, really stupid mistake by pulling the shirt. Uh, the referee didn't see it because the, uh, a Porto player would never have gotten there. Never in, a, in a, any time. They were looked at it on VAR, whether it was offside, it was not, and well, the short pull was clear, so it's a penalty. Really, really stupid. Absolute stupidity by Florenti. Uh, was not necessary to do that. Uh, and I think Teish, not sure now, made it 3 1. Uh, it was only a few minutes to go. Um, of course, there was a big overtime because the VAR review took quite some time. And then. Um, one less chance. I mean, Porto actually had then the upper hand, but there was one less corn, corner kick that uh, was not very well defended, but um, it's again Schick who came in, uh, goes for the ball and is crossed on the back. Clearly, I mean, it was not much, but he was tripped up. The referee says play on, they look at it at VAR, and honestly, I understand clear and obvious. Uh, 
and it was maybe not clear and obvious, and that's why the penalty was not given. Uh, but I honestly think you could have defended given a penalty there. But yeah, Porto moves on, and I gotta say, probably deserved. Uh, it hurts me a little bit, but it was deserved. Now to the other game. Uh, PS, just as a remember, PSG absolutely dominated Manchester United in Manchester. Uh, that 2-0 was flattering. Should have been an absolute... Uh, uh, could have been a much higher scoreline. Uh, yesterday, Lukaku, after a stupid back pass, uh, Gets the ball, puts it in the net, makes it 1-0 for Manchester United. Uh, and I have to say, the Jurich Jersey matchup, it looks black against white. That was another reason why I didn't actually look forward to that game too much. It's weird, but you know, the Jersey my, my, my matchup doesn't seem right. But you know, the white is this... Uh, the United kit was more pinkish. And I had a slight rose. Uh, pink tone. Anyway, uh, makes it 1-0 and of course, you know, get another one. PSG dominated thereafter and quickly got the equalizer. M Mbappé uh, um, making a uh, pass across the box to Bernat, who just has to pull it in. Uh, it's 1 1, and from that moment on, A, we don't have overturn from that moment on, it seems pretty safe, especially since Paris Saint Germain had chances and chances and dominated possession. I mean, it was ridiculous. Over 70%. Manchester United was only defending. Well, then they got out. Uh, was I don't know who, who, who made the shot. And uh, the other thing you have to uh, say, Manchester United, they were without Pogba and many missing. Um, just out for defense. And then a shot that Buffon cannot control. And I get it. This is maybe the second shot on goal, but you Buffon, you need to hold on, even if it's a, and uh, if he, if look at yes, it takes a weird bounce and it goes off his rib cage. Lukaku is there, makes it 2-1. Absolutely, absolutely undeserved. And United was, from what I could tell, not even threatening in the second half. At any point, it was all PSG. Uh, and Bernat, after Mbappé's... Um, who, uh, 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 Mbappé shows we've already made the chance. I mean, he botched it, but got it off to Bernat, who hits the post. It was a little bit weird, but you know. You gotta make chances and then if and then VAR again takes center stage a shot that went way over the bar um, gets deflected I don't know as I, I didn't see this again but it gets deflected a guy uh, a PSG defender with the back to the shooter but with his arm out and it hits the arm and it goes uh, for a corner and of course to look at it at VAR and if we know anything from VAR Personally, I'm not sure if this is a deliberate handball and uh, I think we're getting rid of that rule. But anyway, even under the new rule uh, that is coming out, this would have been a uh, penalty, I'm sure. Yeah, it is a penalty. Rashford steps up and it's 3-1 Manchester United and Manchester United is through. Uh, Honestly, I don't think they know how they got that result. You were lucky to not go down by more in uh, in Manchester. And you're lucky to get those three goals out of seemingly nowhere. This is absolute disaster for Paris Saint-Germain. Absolute disaster. I mean, this is the one competition that you are setting up to win enough for the third time in a row. Uh, you are out of the competition at the first knockout stage and we already know the Barcelona thing was absolutely despicable we know that you know Real Madrid okay was Real Madrid that one I am actually willing to let go and this was right after Neymar was injured Neymar was injured this time as well but I'm sorry going like that Getting eliminated like that against a Man United team that didn't even have Pogba on there. That was absolutely the last <laughs> squad or whatever. It cannot be. And it's not only the VAR decision. Uh, yes, it's 
potentially contentious, although I don't think so. What really gets me there is that you cannot take your chances. Yes, Draxler went out and blah, blah, blah. I'm afraid Tuchel is gone. Although uh, the PSG uh, Boras has not been as trigger happy. But this is, I mean, huge storyline. Absolutely huge storyline. Uh, complete disaster for PSG. Now, personal point of view, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually happy about it. Right up until the Qataris took over, I really loved PSG. This was my team in France for some reason. Well, for some reason, I love Paris. Uh, so it's not some reason, but I do love. I do. I did like PSG. When the Qataris with their dirty business models and um, killing the market things got into power, I gotta say I lost a little bit and then getting Neymar surely did not help. Anyway, I on the other side I would have liked to see them go on because I wanted to see, you know, they have a great squad. I mean Mbappe is a force of nature. But on the other side, and yeah, Manchester is also a big team and they probably also are with some uh, shady practices. But they're a traditional team. And I like the traditional team to move on in that case. Uh, as for Porto Roma, yes, so I have a PSG shirt, I have a Roma shirt, and I don't have any one of the ones that moved on. So that's why I'm wearing uh, black today. Oh, I have the black Ajax shirt. Um, it's not cold. But honestly, Porto deserved to go on. When I saw the game yesterday, and I had the feeling all along, uh, Porto is going to make that one. I actually think there's a good chance that we have four, three to four English teams. Uh, you know, Bayern Munich, Liverpool for me is a toss-up. Um, we will probably have two Spanish teams, given that Atleti and Barcelona hang on, which I would assume. We have one Dutch team, we have one Portuguese team, and that's the Champions League. It's gonna be interesting. It's surely going to be in, 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 interesting, but I think this is the biggest chance I think that the Premier League has to actually win something. Uh, this time around it looks more open, uh, but you know, never discounted to Spanish contenders. Um, if we know one thing, if there are a few teams in the running, the La Liga teams are usually the ones that will make it all the way. But let's see. Let me know what you watched. Sorry, I actually should have spent more time on the big result. I think Manchester United uh, PSG. That's the bomb from yesterday. But I saw the other game. Um, and it was an enjoy. It was not a great game, but it was an enjoyable game to watch. Uh, and you know, I was at the point where I really said, okay, Porto would deserve to go through. Although uh, that penalty, the last minute thing, <sighs> yeah, I would have liked to have seen called but that's me anyway let me know what you saw thought thought about all the, all these games uh, whether you agree disagree with me give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.